CK or creatinine kinase with normal lab values ranging between 26 to about 160 for adults is an enzyme that exists pretty much exclusively within skeletal muscle, heart muscle, and, and, and then as well some in the brain, okay? So it really exists in these three places, skeletal, heart muscle, and some in the brain. So this enzyme CK or creatinine kinase is really important in uh, intracellular storage and energy release. So with CK, there's some isoenzymes as well, and they're identified by where they're actually located. So we have CKBB, CKMB, and CKMM. CKBB is in the brain, CKMB is in the cardiac muscle, and CKMM is in the skeletal muscle. So we can use these isoenzymes to determine exactly you know, what we're looking at. Okay. So essentially what will happen is when there's injury to one of these tissues, to the brain, to the skeletal muscle, to the heart, these isoenzymes will be released. Okay. So providers can evaluate the levels of these isoenzymes to determine where the injury is, when the injury occurred, and if the patient is, is recovering. Because these CK enzymes, they actually have levels that increase and decrease in very predictable time ranges. So if they look at CK and they look at the different isoenzymes, they can say, okay, there was skeletal muscle injury at this point, it's starting to resolve. Or they can look at CKMB, for example, and say, okay, this is when the myocardial infarction probably was, and it's starting to resolve. So one of the most common reasons we'll use CK is we'll actually use CKMB to determine when a myocardial infarction occurred, if it occurred, and then we'll actually use it along with other lab values like troponin I to determine if there was a cardiac uh, event, a myocardial infarction. So CK will be released into the blood within 48 hours of a myocardial infarction. It will return to normal within about three days. Now CKMB appears in those first six to 24 hours, and it's usually completely gone within 72 hours. So we can really, we look at our CK, our total CK, we can say, okay, there's something going on. We can look at our CKMB and say, okay, there was a myocardial infarction. It's gonna peak at this point, and then it will disappear when, within this point. And then we can use these other portions of CK, like our CKMM or our total CK, for conditions like rhabdomyolysis, which would occur from like crushing injuries or heavy drug use, and it, it, it shows severe skeletal muscle trauma. So really all I want you to remember is that CK, creatinine kinase, is within the muscles. It's released into the blood when there's some sort of injury to the muscles, and we can look at CK. BB, CKMB, and CKMM to determine if this is injury in the brain, uh, in the cardiac tissue or cardiac muscle, or in the skeletal muscle. So some of the reasons we're going to see it elevated are going to be like congestive heart failure, myocardial infarction, myocarditis. So you're thinking injury to the heart, right? It can also occur with head injury, and that would we would see that with CKBB. And then it can occur in conditions like rhabdomyolysis, surgery. So things that muscular dystrophy, injury to skeletal muscle. So these are really where we're going to see this, okay? So it's really important to really look at this and we can determine if the patient has a cardiac injury, muscular injury, and possibly a brain injury. If there's a severe uh, brain injury, we can maybe see an elevated CKBB. But like I said, it's, it's a lot of times the CKMB is going to be used in conjunction with like troponinide to determine and to assess um, myocardial infarction. So really important lab value to look at. And total CK, like we said, should be about 25, 26 to about 140. That's going to be your total CK. 